Welcome to the Bio Girl Health Show with Carol Newman. Do you want the energy and vitality you need to fully enjoy your life and all of its possibilities? Carol Newman can help teach you how to nourish your body with healthy organic living, keeping you beautiful inside and out. And now, here's your host. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Henry, and I'm here with Carol Newman. And today we'll be talking with Carol and a special guest about epilepsy and diet and all kinds of good things. But before Carol joins us, I just want to remind you that if you have questions or comments for Carol during the show or any time, you can send your questions on Twitter using our hashtag, BioGirlHealth. Carol, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm just fine, thank you. Kimberly, how are you? I'm fantastic. It's good to see you or talk with you again. And I understand you have a special guest guest with us today. I do. Her name is Arlene Martel, and she is a publisher of www.epilepsymoms.com. It's a resource for parents who have a child with epilepsy. And she is author of the book, Getting Adam Back, a Mother's Triumph Over Epilepsy and Autism. And also, Arlene lives in White Rock, British Columbia, and that's in Canada. And she also is the mother of four children, and now they're grown, and a grandmother to one, and I believe one on the way, too. So it's exciting for Arlene. So welcome, Arlene. Well, thanks, Carol. It's great to be here. (laughs) It's great to have you, Arlene. Thanks, Carol, for, for that introduction. So, Arlene, if I understand correctly, you have a son um, who was diagnosed with epilepsy and autism. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about how that diagnosis and prognosis came about? Sure. Well, Adam is um, 26 now, but all of these problems with his seizures started when he was just four years old. And uh, let me tell you, it's been quite the battle that we've had to go through, but um, we found some amazing treatments. That worked really well for Adam, and I just love to share that with other people. So, you know, they've got the opportunity to learn about it and or maybe tell someone else that they know who have a child with epilepsy. So Adam was diagnosed at age four with, it's called Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, which is a form of epilepsy where they don't just have one type of seizure, but they have multiple types of seizures, which makes it really difficult to control with medication because Adam would have what they call a tonic-clonic convulsive seizure about four to five times a week. He would have the absent seizures, which are just like, it's kind of like um, like, they're, like they're staring off into space or like they're daydreaming. It's kind of like a mm. light switch that goes off and on. Like they're with you for one second and they're, then they're, they're tuning out. Then they're with you, then they tune out. And that could happen hundreds of times a day. So to give Adam any kind of constructive instructions was really difficult for his brain to process and then he also had the drop seizures or or he would just stand in one in one place and then just hit the floor so with multiple different types of seizures it became really difficult to treat him and in fact we tried um, six different anticonvulsant medications over a four-year period and nothing worked for us it was just Horrible. The side effects of these medications on a little guy who's four years old was unbelievable. He would have, mm-hmm. well, mostly he was just so lethargic and so sleepy and dopey and just tired. The medication just wiped him out. Um, but we found when he finally did start school that his short-term memory was gone. So, you know, to try and teach him anything at school was really difficult because you'd, you'd think you'd teach it to him and the next day whatever you taught him would be gone again and just a Mm. lot of confusion and then and as as we tried different medications there would be different side effects his mouth would burn he would get cramps in his stomach or cramps in his legs and on one particular medication that we tried I don't even know what happened it's just like this switch went off in his head and he became extremely aggressive and to the point where we could never leave him alone with the other children and he's the oldest of four. So, And I had a baby in the house at the time, and I'm telling you, I remember calling social services. I was trying to get respite for Adam because we were just so exhausted. We had no family close by to help us. And um, finally, when we brought the baby home, uh, I, know I phoned them crying. Like I was just breaking down saying, I can't do this anymore. I need some help. And we finally got some respite in the house. But believe me, he was extremely difficult to manage, and it was 24-7 care for him. 
a family in turmoil that you know that the siblings couldn't have friends over um just you know you, you just don't realize how much um a diagnosis like this can impact a family and the, they eventually did tell me at the hospital that Adam would um suffer progressive mental retardation continued seizures and they told us to put him in a crash helmet and put him in an institution. Oh, that is so... Oh, how devastating. Arlene, can you explain respite? I'm not familiar with it. I'm not sure if the, all the listeners are. Yeah, respite is just where they, um, they'll they bring in uh, like a, a little a care worker that will come into the home and take care of Adam so we could go out. Or they would take Adam out of the home to activities so that we could just have some time without him and you know just it's a little bit of relief for for us sure thank god for that resource it sounds like such an emotional and challenging time mm-hmm. for you and your family for, yeah for four years and you know they say that 75 percent of families that have a special needs child their marriage doesn't survive i'm telling you i could see why sometimes there were times mm-hmm. like you're just on the brink you just don't even know where to turn anymore and nothing's working and that, you know, you're questioning the doctors. And I, I was actually always good at that, questioning, questioning, questioning. If this isn't working, then I would search and search and search. And, um, you know, it, it got so frustrating because um, they were trying to, to help him, but they couldn't help him. They didn't know what to do. So what kind of treatments did you end up finding that helped Adam? Well, you know what? I Like I said, I was always – I always knew – in the back of my mind that there was something out there that was going to work for Adam. I, I always knew. I had, I had done the, the drug route. We had done, um, we tried herbs. We tried aromatherapy. We tried chiropractic. We tried uh, some other uh, special chiropractic of the brain. Um, and finally, one day on TV, a show came on, Dateline NBC, and it was a special show dedicated to epilepsy for children. And my mom actually saw the show, and she phoned me. She says, Arlene, there's a show on. You've got to go and see this show. And here it was. It's, an, it's a great story because the, the gentleman that put this show together, his name is Jim Abrams, and he's from Hollywood, California, and he's actually a, a big movie director there. And his son, Charlie, had the exact same diagnosis as Adam. They did the same thing. They tried the medications. They tried everything, and nothing worked. And he was able to find this special diet called the ketogenic diet. And he put his son, Charlie, on the diet. And within a week, Charlie was completely seizure-free. And he was, Mm. holy crap. He sat up in bed one night and said, all this stuff that we went through didn't have to happen. If the doctors had told me about this diet, we could have put Charlie on this diet right away and saved a whole lot of grief. And so what he did, because he had connections, he got together with Meryl Streep, who's a good friend of his. They put together um, a television show called First Do No Harm, which is all about the ketogenic diet. And he did this, he did a, a series of shows for Dateline NBC. And back then, to get uh, an alternative treatment like this in, onto mainstream TV was, I'm sure, was very difficult to do. But he did it, and that's where I found it, and I went marching right back to Children's Hospital and said, I don't know what this diet is, but I want to try this diet for Adam. And luckily, um, our hospital was just trying the diet for the first time, and Adam was the 12th child in the province on the diet, and they fasted him for three days, uh, and then within, I'm not kidding, within a week, there was a completely different change in Adam. His seizures completely stopped, which was unbelievable to me. That is. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So let me tell you just quickly how, what this ketogenic diet is. Um, it, it's, it's been around since the 1920s, which seems unbelievable that the doctors didn't tell me about it or give it to me as an option because it's been around for so long. But with the, um, you know, in the, in the 30s and 40s when all of these medication started coming on board, the diet really just got lost in the shuffle and it was got buried. And um, thank goodness, uh, Johns Hopkins University, they kept the diet alive all of these years. And then with um, Jim Abrams, he also started a foundation called charliefoundation.org. 
and now he trains uh, dietitians all over the world to administer the diet. So the diet is finally becoming mainstream again, which is really awesome. But um, when you when you go on the diet, it's about 30% of the kids that try the diet become completely seizure-free. 30% have a reduction of seizures of about 50% or more, and the, about another 30% don't continue with the diet, either because it's too hard on the child, they don't like the food, or the parents just give up on it because it's mm-hmm. so, so strict. It's not an easy diet to do. Um, we have to weigh and measure every gram of food that goes in the child's mouth. And the food is its very interesting. Um, but you know what? It, it works. And most people only need to go on the diet for two years, and then they're, they stay seizure-free for the rest of their lives, which is incredible. So I'll just tell you what the um, the ketogenic diet is. It's it's a dietary therapy, and what they do is they give the children high fat with just a little bit of protein and a little bit of carbohydrate, just enough for their body to survive on. And what the, ba- the body does then is it turns, it forces the body to burn the fat rather than the carbohydrates. So what it does is it puts their body in ketosis as if they were fasting, and when mm-hmm. the body is fasting, seizures stop. Like there's a there's another there's a whole um, you know there's a, a whole explanation for it that your you know your carbohydrates uh, are usually turned to glucose they're transported around the body but when there's very little carbohydrate the liver converts the fat into fatty acids and, and ketone bodies and then the ketones pass into the brain they replace the glucose as an energy source and then the body goes into ketosis and seizures stop so it's it's quite an amazing diet, and they have five, uh, sorry, four times the fat ratio than they do to the protein and carbohydrates. So if you looked at Adam's meal, there would be lots of whipping cream, lots of butter, lots of cream cheese, all, and lots of um, like essential fatty acids, and then just a little bit of protein and carbohydrates. So there would be eggs, a little bit of fruit or vegetable, but only certain fruits and vegetables. And then you had to make a meal out of this. So we had to be very creative. But we found some awesome, awesome meals. And Adam liked the food, thank goodness. And uh, it worked for us. So we were able to stay on the diet quite easily. I have a question for you, Eileen. Uh-huh. Could you use like a high-quality protein powder as a protein source? I don't believe so. No, you do um, not. Okay. No. What they would do, like in cases where a child is sick, and they couldn't eat like a meal, they would actually make like an eggnog. It was kind of cool. They'd use the whipping cream, they'd put some egg in it, and they'd make like an eggnog shake. Okay. And uh, that's how they would how they would fulfill the protein in that case. What about the fat? Was it certain types of fat? I mean, like could they use coconut oil or olive oil as a fat, or was it yes. specific? Yeah, it's the good fats. You have to use the good, the good fats. And um, they're very, very strict with um, how much they have to have. And uh, But you know what? It's awesome. And I get a lot of questions from people about, um, does this diet work for adults? And actually, the answer is they do have a version of the diet for adults, but they don't call it the ketogenic diet because they don't weigh and measure the food like they do for the kids. But there is a, a website resource that's really good. It's called atkinsforseizures.com. And where they, they use a, a form of the Atkins diet for seizure control in adults. That's fantastic, Arlene. We are we are pushing on on our time, but I want to make sure that folks have um, a resource to get more information about what you've shared today. Do you have a web address you want to give out so that people can find more about the keto de- ketogenic diet and your journey? Yes. So www.epilepsymoms.com. EpilepsyMoms.com. Yeah, I have lots of blog Excellent. posts on there, lots of information about the ketogenic diet there. Fantastic. And really quickly, what advice do you have for parents who have a child with epilepsy who are just beginning to sort these things out for themselves? You know, it's the scariest, scariest thing, and it's, you know what, you got to go with your gut. If you think something's not right, it probably isn't. You have to explore all your options. The wonderful thing about having the Internet now is that you can research, you can see stories from other parents, you can find out things about the ketogenic diet, um, 
And you know what? There's lots of 